Dungeon Meshi is something special. A good anime will have really nice art, smooth animation, immersive voice acting, a cohesive plot with a satisfying conclusion, and countless other factors. But for a show to be special, it needs to have something special. It needs heart. And the heart of Dungeon Meshi is found in its characters. This is the story of a small band of friends living in a fairly standard fantasy world. Elements like magic, traditional fantasy monsters, and a roughly anachronistic level of technology associated with the medieval era are all present. The hook of the story, its premise, is that this band of friends is exceptionally broke. Without money to afford food, they resort to hunting and eating the various monsters that populate the titular dungeon. The story puts a great deal of its focus on the culinary skills, taxonomy, biology, and ecology that would naturally befall an environment populated by monsters if they were real organisms comprising the food chain of an area. For example, mandrakes are traditionally a plant of arcane origins that screams when plucked from the ground, causing pain and other ills to anyone within earshot. When the group encounters mandrakes, the better part of half of an episode is spent discussing different methods of bypassing the threat of their screams and the effect this has on their use as an ingredient in cooking. This is the gist of Dungeon Meshi, what you can glean from the synopsis on Netflix if you pass over it in a menu. But it's not the heart. No, it's an important part of things, but the heart is our little hapless band of doofuses. For the sake of not spoiling the manga, we're going to focus on the initial group that most of the anime focuses on. Laos, Chilichuk, Marsil, and of course, everyone's favorite dwarf, Senshi. And more specifically, we're going to focus on how they're all a bunch of hypocrites. Now, don't get me wrong here. Hypocrisy is typically considered a negative trait, and calling someone such is typically considered rude and offensive, or even an attack on that person. That's not what this is. I utterly love these characters, and I think they're all genuinely good people at their core. But they are guilty, in their own different ways, of being hypocrites. And that's what I want to talk about today. Let's start with Laios, everyone's favorite autistic dad bod adventurer. Early on in the series, Senshi claims to have built a relationship of trust with a Kelpie, a kind of water monster resembling a horse, and says he plans to ride it. When Laos tells him to be cautious, as this is a monster we're talking about, Senshi ignores him, and Laos has to save him from the Kelpie. This entire time, Laos is carrying and using a sword he pillaged from the living armor, a sword which houses a specimen of the mollusk colony that was housed in the armor. He even names it Kensuke, and while Kensuke does alert them to danger a couple of times, this is only due to its own frightfulness, not a sense of loyalty. During the fight with the Red Dragon, this nearly gets everyone killed, and costs them a chance to kill the dragon early on, as Kensuke flings itself out of Laos' hands at a crucial yet terrifying moment. Lecturing his teammates on the dangers of monsters, while his own blind trust in one nearly gets them all killed. Hypocrite. And a good example of what I meant before. Laos is a good man, Heroic, fair, far from a bad guy. But this is still a failing he carries, and one he has to overcome. Something that makes his character much more interesting. Chelichuk suffers a similar fault, or at least one that happens at similar beats in the story. When the group first encounters a chamber heavily laden with traps, Chelichuk grows frustrated with Senshi for not heeding his expertise on the challenge at hand. Signing how they trust him to navigate the dungeon and prepare food, so he should trust Chillachuck in his specialty. Which is a fair point, and certainly something most people can sympathize with. When you're genuinely an expert on something, you expect that expertise to be respected and listened to. However, Chillachuck is quick to criticize the other's plans in their fields, especially Marcel, when it comes to magic. He's also quick to overstep his job of picking locks and traps when the need arises for him to get in and contribute to a fight, which makes it kind of silly to expect the others to stay in their lanes 
when, at times, he's had to step out of his to save everyone. Marcel's hypocrisy is one of the more egregious cases. She's the only party member to consistently take a longer period of time adjusting to the party's diet in the dungeon, consistently decrying the meals as off-putting long after since she's proven himself an exemplary cook. This closed-mindedness, while illogical, is understandable. People need time to come to terms with new things, especially new things to eat, and some people take longer than others. However, Marcel, as revealed after the Red Dragon fight, practices black magic, which is feared and looked down on by the majority of people. And while she raises some good points in defense of her practice, she offers only the most cursory of explanations before suggesting it be used to revive Phelan. So, tapping into forbidden arcane techniques that use your own blood to tamper with the forces of nature, well, duh, of course that's okay. You're just closed-minded if you think otherwise. But eating a scorpion, well, now you're crazy. Hypocrite. Sinchi might be the worst member of the group in this regard. To break it down, let's look at two of his most dominant characteristics. His independent, survivalist attitude that necessitates doing hard work for the sake of staying sharp, avoiding easy solutions, particularly using magic. His views of, quote, unnatural, unquote, magic, like the resurrection spell used to bring back Namari, or Marcel's black magic. He's incredibly adverse to using magic to solve problems or overcome adversity, to the point of throwing a full-blown tantrum at the suggestion of using a water-walking spell to cross a lake. He claims that a reliance on easy solutions, such as magic, makes one dependent on them, and without consistent hard work, other skills grow lax. And this is a fair point. There's something to be said in favor of discipline, even when an easy solution is available. However... Senshi himself doesn't always hold to this. Let's look at his gear. A chipped axe that he's done nothing to maintain or repair, and a pan and knife made from special, highly durable metal. These latter two things, he didn't acquire for himself. He didn't make them with his own hands. They were passed down from his family and made by a special artisan. Gifts. Mr. You-need-to-do-hard-work-and-not-take-the-easy-road has himself taken the easy road by neglecting the very important skill of maintaining his gear. He was given a special pan that doesn't need to be taken care of, and went out of his way to have a knife made for him by someone with the skills to make it. His aversion to using magic to fix problems is even more egregious when you take into consideration where he lives, the dungeon an entire ecosystem that sustains itself on the lives of magic creatures. Hell, it's only possible for him to live the life that he does because he can use magic golems as walking gardens, deep within the bowels of the dungeon, away from sunlight and other resources normally needed to grow the herbs and vegetables he eats. His aversion to unnatural magic is also rather ill-founded. The nature of resurrection, with souls bound close to their bodies, is a property of the dungeon. In fact, the dungeon itself is unnatural, an arcane production of the Mad Mage. And the cherry on top is that Senshi himself is an unnatural facet of the dungeon, artificially maintaining it. He says clear as day that his work keeps larger monsters from coming up and driving smaller monsters out to terrorize the surface and find homes in other places. He is artificially keeping things the way they are, instead of letting the nature of the dungeon take its course. For all his talk of hard work this and unnatural that, Senshi loves to take the easy road with certain things and tamper with the natural order of others, while lecturing other people about why these things are wrong, but not when he does it. I don't bring up these points to besmirch these characters. Quite the opposite, I bring these points up because I love them. I love how they're written. Too many writers think a character needs flaws. That is to say, they'll write a character who's a jerk, or inept, or childish, or any number of things, and then just leave them like that. As if the flaw was stapled on their chest at the last minute because a character needs flaws tacked on to be realistic, not have them as obstacles to overcome, grow out of, or reconcile with. And that's not how people are. Yes, we have flaws, but kind of the whole point of being a person 
is learning how to grow past them. If you're a jerk, learn to resolve your issues and be nice. If you're inept, practicing a skill. If you're childish, growing up. Or at least recognizing these parts of yourself and reconciling with them to make your life and the lives of those around you easier and better. And when a fantastic piece of writing incorporates a very real sense of how people behave and rectify their mistakes, well, I think that's something worth applauding.